The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. You're watching Element 14 Presents. My name is DJ, and whether or not you were a fan of the series, I'm here to let you know we have to go back. Now, don't worry if you weren't a fan of the show Lost. We're not a media channel. We don't do reviews here, but we do build cool things with electronics. So I'm building a cool electronic thing from Lost. And if you miss the clickety clackety noise of airports and metro stations around the globe, then you'll enjoy this project because I am building a split flap countdown timer, a very specific one, the five digit counter from Swan Station, AKA the hatch. You know, the one that lets you know every 108 minutes that you get to type in the numbers or else things get really weird? That one. And let's get started. So at the heart of this build is the split flap mechanism itself. Now, from now on, I'm just gonna say SF instead of split flap because it's a lot faster to say. So SF displays are fairly straightforward and really elegant. You've got a wheel, and that wheel has two captive discs that retain flaps, and on each of these flaps are half of a digit or character. And as the wheel rotates, it reveals the next digit or character, which is a really simple way to have a persistent display. So if you move a character into place, you don't have to power the motor anymore. It will just stay visible until you rotate that wheel again. Now, for this display, Thankfully, there are the same number of characters or digits per wheel. I've worked it out to be 20. So that's 10 for numbers, as well as 10 for Egyptian hieroglyphs. Well, really nine plus a blank one because I wanted to have a blank tile so I could show nothing. Anyway, that's how I'm going to arrange my version of the split flap display. So I decided that I was going to laser cut all of my flaps. This was definitely going to be the fastest and most accurate way that I could make them. They're all made out of 16th inch black acrylic. Now, as you can see, that uh, is way too shiny. So I need to spray paint them to make them matte and of course make them the appropriate colors because there are also red and white flaps as well. After I've got my flaps painted, I needed to mask them so I could basically create stencils in place for painting the secondary colors for the font or symbols. So once I did that, I laid them out on a jig so that I could accurately flip them. And I only did five at a time. This way I was less likely to make a mistake, which I definitely never did. Once I had that, I was able to peel the masking tape and have nice, perfectly aligned stencils for all of my flaps. And then it was a simple matter of spraying the secondary color for each of the flaps to make a finished piece. And I just need to do that 100 times. Okay, so let's walk through the assembly process of one of the SF displays. I've got the display flaps themselves, the core of the wheel, the retaining discs, and the pulley itself. Now I've also made this jig right here, and I'm gonna set that aside because I don't need it yet. So I'm gonna assemble the half of the wheel, so that includes the pulley and one of the retaining discs, and we'll just speed this up. So we figured out the most challenging mechanical part of this electrical mechanical build. Now I was a little worried that they wouldn't be clickety or clackety enough, but uh, I think they're gonna be just fine. So I'm gonna have five of these displays in a row, which means I can't have the motors coaxial to the wheels themselves, which means I need to offset them and drive them from behind. Now originally I had considered using gears, one smaller gear and one larger gear so that I would have enough space to clear the flaps. This would have been simpler and cheaper, 
but in my testing, it just didn't work. So instead, I'm gonna use teeny tiny timing belts. These are 1 8 inch or 3.175 uh, timing belts and they're super adorable and that's why there are pulleys on each of the wheels. So they're nice and thin so I can still have the wheels pretty tight. Not as perfectly tight as the model in the show but hey, that was computer generated so they didn't have to obey the laws of physics anyway. So in order to actually drive those timing belts, I'm gonna be using a stepper motor. And this is a NEMA 17 stepper motor, which is plenty powerful and compact for my design. Now, I need to drive this, so I'm also gonna need a stepper motor driver. And for that, I'm going with the Trinamic TMC 2208, which is super awesome and easy to use. So the stepper motor is all good to go, but I also need to know exactly where in the rotation the display is so that I'm showing the right character. And for that, for that, I'm gonna need some sort of feedback. And I'm gonna use this photo interrupter. And I've got a quick setup here so you can see that when I move this little notched disc, I can tell accurately when that wheel is in the right rotation. Now, to drive the whole shebang, I'm gonna be using a microcontroller. In this case, the Teensy 3.6, which has a ton of GPIO, has a built-in SD card, and most importantly, USB host capability. More on that later. So this is going to drive the stepper drivers, as well as an audio amplifier, because I'm gonna be playing some sound effects. Also more on that later. Now, the stepper motors need 12 volts, but the Teensy runs off of USB. So that means I'll need a five volt source. So I've decided to add a 12 volt to 5 volt regulator, and this will power the lower voltage circuitry, like the Teensy and the audio amplifier. I'll also want a clean and simple way to switch the AC power on and off, so I'm gonna use this power entry module, which is just a really nifty and clean way to add a professional touch to your enclosed electronic project. All right, we've mostly got all of the parts figured out, but there's one last really important thing. I could have just made the display unit itself, but the whole point is to enter the numbers. So how am I gonna do that? Well, in the show, they used an Apple II computer. I don't have an Apple II, but I do have this really cool monochrome dumb terminal that has a green phosphor display, which is just mm, perfect. So this is how I'm actually going to be able to type in the correct sequence of numbers for the display. Now, I've already got a USB to serial converter, so I don't need to bother making my own. This is just a really simple way to plug in this old device to my microcontroller. Okay, so let's talk about the motor and sensor assembly. And I've got all my parts laid out here. We've got the NEMA 17 motor the photo interrupter sensor, the mounting bracket, the interrupter disc, a spacer, and the little pulley for the motor. So let's go ahead and put this together. All right, and now we've got our lovely completed motor sensor assembly, and I just need to do that five more times. All right, so let's talk about electronics and how everything's actually going to connect. Now I like to start with power because that's the simplest thing to trace. So we'll have AC power coming in through this switched power entry module. This will go to our AC to DC 12 volt power supply. This will connect to the first control board, which is where we've got our 12 to five volt regulator. So this will provide five volts for the Teensy as well as the audio amplifier. Now the Teensy runs at 3.3 volt logic, so it has a 3.3 volt regulator. This will provide the logic power for all of the driver boards. Now as for connections, we'll have the GPIO from the Teensy. Let me get a little bit closer here. So let's talk about the connections on the main board. We've got the Teensy's DAC connected to the audio input of this amplifier. And this, of course, has some screw terminals that will connect to the speaker. 
and that's pretty straightforward. I've also got male headers here on the sides of the uh, GPIO so that I can directly connect via female headers to the male headers here on the driver board. And most of this is just ground and logic buses so that I can tie the appropriate pins on the drivers, either high or low. I've also got this little set of current limiting resistors here. This is gonna be where I attach the sensors, so the current limiting resistor for each of the um, LEDs and you know, a ground connection as well. And we'll just connect the output uh, or the collectors um, of the phototransistors to some of the GPIO on the Teensy, which, and I'll use the internal pull-ups um, for those signals. And I've also got a header right here, and this is the USB header for the USB connector for USB host to the cable to connect to the dumb terminal. Pretty simple, right? All right, it's time to do a partial assembly of the enclosure, which consists of aluminum plates. Yes, I don't have footage for the CNC cutting this out, but it is just as thrilling as you'd imagine watching a machine move in straight lines for hours and hours because these are all rectangular plates. But I did some fun things like cut out this grill for the speaker and some cutouts for the ports on the bottom of the enclosure. Are you an engineer, electronics hobbyist, or maker? Join the Element 14 community, where you can learn about new products and technologies, see cool projects, and connect directly with the people that make the products and engineers that use them. Join now! All right, we are getting really close. As you can see, I've got things mostly assembled. We've got uh, some of the basic panels for the frame screwed together. Now you'll notice that there are these 3D printed posts and these are what the plates screw into. Now the front plate right now is just taped because there are no visible screws in the model for the display. So I'm gonna have to glue that on here in a bit. But for right now, I just need to test it out. So I've already installed the wheels, and while I do have the sensors that allow me to figure out the index of that motor, that still doesn't tell me what is actually shown. I still have to manually calibrate things because that index could be at any position right now, so I don't know where that's at. So I've written a quick function uh, for the uh, program that is ultimately gonna run this to allow me to manually calibrate it. So let me turn this on. All right, that's good. So it works just by sending simple serial commands, so just single characters. So each of the displays has given uh, a letter code. So this is A, B, C, D, E. I know, that's just how I wanna do it because this is the least significant number and the most significant number, and that's how I'm gonna structure this program. So if I want to move this one position, I can just type in E and we'll flip over once. And let's go over here, and if I type in capital C, that'll move five times. And one, two, three. So now I'm displaying all zeros, which I've decided is the baseline just for the display. It could be anything, really. And I'm gonna send another character that lets it know that it's been calibrated. So I've got some presets. Obviously, the most important one is the full timer itself. So let's go ahead and... <clears throat> it only does this if that's the very first preset command to go. So let me, let me fix this. All right, C. No, it's a little too far. One, two, three, four. All right, let's do a different preset. Blank, all blanks. Let's go to reset. Perfect. And last but not least, 
I think it's gonna work just fine. Nah, it's fine. It does that all the time. That's different. Nah, it's not a problem. Let's see. Four, eight, fifteen, sixteen, twenty-three, and thirty-two. That should do it. I am so excited with how this build turned out. This was such a challenging project. I didn't include all of the footage of me swearing at my computer, but trust me, there was a lot of it. Now, there are certainly things that could be improved, but that's for another enterprising Lost fan. You can of course always find the files for our projects at element14.com forward slash presents. So if you wanna make your own countdown clock, there's nothing stopping you. I won't tell you what you can't do. I would really love to see someone make their own version, maybe add some sort of like electromagnet or something when it starts to freak out. I think that would be pretty awesome. That's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching, and remember, 